Hi guys, here's the butterfly stitch um, circular jacket. As you can see, it's made using the butterfly stitch. If you've ever seen it before, it has the little um, string that runs in between it. Like that. Sorry, I'm holding the camera because I want you to be able to see this really, really well. That's the front. It has a bit of ruffle here on the bottom. Just because I uh, I went uh, increased enough. Just increasing makes it have that ruffle look. And here's the back with it being just a circle. You unbutton it here and open it up. You can see it's just one big circle basically. It's just all in where you put your armholes and I will show you how to do that. Um, as you can see here's the sleeve and it's not quite in the middle but it's farther down than the top. You definitely want to have a wider you want it to be wider on the back then because I did begin with it being like here and here like closer smaller top smaller amount of uh, stitches in between each didn't work out very well it uh, was causing this to actually uh, fall back almost like a hood but a weird hood so I'm going to help to teach you where and how to put your sleeves on and this is the back this is where we're going to be starting this is using the butterfly stitch spiral which I have taught in another video but I do want to I did tweak the pattern just a little bit so I'm going to be showing you how to do that okay so for this project you're going to need at least three colors I mean three colors three skeins um, what I was thinking about the colors is that you can uh, use any colors that you like like maybe you want to make the center here the spiral a different color than say the you know butterfly stitch that goes around it it's up to you however you want to do the colors but uh, you're at least going to need um, two for each if you're going to do because I think the center one took me more than a skein and then I went and I used to uh, another one to do this part and then basically to finish this part and to do the sleeves so I, I used three total but if you're just going to use one color then just get three skeins and this is 45% acrylic and 55% viscose and uh, it's 100 grams and 240 meters in this so you're going to need to get a 240 meter uh, skein or about that or if you're getting a shorter one then uh, then definitely get a fourth this is also considered three ply for the US and eight ply for Australia and I used a four millimeter hook, which uh, I believe is a size G hook. Uh, there's no real four meter, four millimeter hook for the US. It's like uh, 4.25 or 3.75. So um, four, four point, let me just check. I'm sure I have it on the pattern here. Yeah, G. I wrote a G just go up a little bit which means it may be just a bit slider uh, in tutorial, size you're also going to need I used three buttons so uh, you depending on what size you're making you may need to have more or less but this is a fairly small I mean I'd say it's about medium size button they usually have a size small medium and large of each button and this is the medium size it's about two centimeters and I die in diameter okay so let's get started I'm gonna be showing you how to do the spiral you grab your four millimeter hook or size G hook and you want to start by chaining six sorry I had to check the pattern real quick uh, it's chain of five sorry one two three four and five then slip stitch in the beginning then you want to chain one and now we're going to be butterfly stitching um, 
I managed to get eight in my ring because I'm just using a four millimeter hook and three ply yarn. This one I probably won't be able to, but go ahead and put eight uh, butterfly stitches worked in your ring. Now to do the butterfly stitch, all you do is you just insert your hook in the stitch, pull up a loop, and then you yarn over, but you only pull through one of the loops on your hook. So essentially you just made a chain with the second uh, stitch here. Now without yarning over, you just want to go right back into that stitch and pull up another loop. Now you have three loops on your hook, just like you would if you were doing a double crochet. And you're going to basically do a double crochet now by yarning over and pulling through two, then yarn over and pull through two, and then chain one. This chain one at the end of the butterfly stitch is part of the stitch itself. You must always chain one at the end. So then that is complete. You go back into the stitch and start your next pull up pull through only one of the loops, insert your hook back into the stitch and pull up, and then yarn over and pull through only two, yarn over, pull through only two, and chain one. This chain one is also what creates this butterfly, this piece of yarn that's in between in the middle of the stitch. If you don't chain one at the end of the stitch, you're not gonna have that. This is also how you decrease with the butterfly stitch. It's just by simply not chaining at the end of the stitch, you're decreasing, at least partly. And then uh, I'll show you that later on. So you wanna continue to do this until you have eight worked into your, your, whoops, until you have eight butterfly stitches worked into your ring. I can't believe it, I actually managed to get eight. Okay, uh, the very last butterfly stitch of the round, go ahead and just, without chaining at the very end of this butterfly stitch, you're going to create that chain by slip stitching into the beginning uh, stitch. So, I want you to go ahead and find this big stitch on the end, the very beginning, and just slip stitch into that stitch and then that's going to create your butterfly right there. Now for round two, what you'll do is you'll chain five, one, two, three, four, and five, and then you want to slip stitch into the next butterfly, the closest butterfly. See this first wing here? You want to go right into this first wing and slip stitch. Then chain two and then you'll turn. And then working now on this chain five here, you'll do usually six. So try to get six, this very first uh, round of the spiral, try to put six in each of your chain fives here. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, and if you have to scoot your stitches down, then do so. And at five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, so I need one more. Okay, got my five here. So then you want to slip stitch into the next butterfly stitch here. Chain five again, one, two, three, four, five. Then you turn your work back over again. Now this is your center and this is your first petal. Now you're, be you're facing the right side again. You wanna find this first butterfly stitch on this section that you just did. There's your butterfly stitch. And again, in this first wing, you'll be doing a slip stitch. 
then you'll chain two and turn. Every time, every time you chain two, you're definitely going to want to turn so that you can start working on this chain that you just did. And again, you'll put six butterfly stitches worked on this chain. And I know I'm doing it a little, a little bit rushed. Like I said, I'm going to be putting up both of those videos for you. The beginner video for uh, the butterfly stitch and also for the spiral. But I'm just going to be showing you a tip on how to uh, help keep it flat. So you, I just want you to stick with me. And uh, when we get to like the second or something row, I'll show you how to start checking it. One, two, three, four, five so that you can keep it flat. And this is definitely an intermediate project. And again, you want to find, this is where you slip stitch into your circle, so find the very next butterfly stitch and you'll slip stitch in that first wing. And then you'll do your chain five again. And then you'll turn. And on the piece you just finished, find that first butterfly stitch again and then the first wing slip stitch chain two and then start working your six butterfly stitches on the same I mean on this chain again do this all the way around what makes this an intermediate is because there is no set pattern later you're just going to have to find the place the best place to put your uh, chain five so that you have your piece flat and also when you're making these butterfly stitches like now I'm putting six worked in the chain later on you may only need to, to put five or four so that it will lay flat but as a rule I did try to always put six butterfly stitches worked on the first round of this spiral and see how this one's starting to come up a bit like that so you know you need to make sure that you slip stitch this one maybe not in the first wing but maybe in the farther wing the second wing just to kind of pull it over a little bit then chain five but of course it's different on your own project and again, find that first wing. Here's the first wing. It's always better to have this uh, chain five be kind of like this, like a upward, like a loop, like a pedal. You don't really want to find a place to stick it where it's going to be flat. You don't want your to be like this. I'll show you, for instance. Like instead of putting it in this one, you, you pulled it over to the next one. See how it's more of a flat one? You really don't want that. You want to try to keep it like that. You want to try to keep it loose whenever possible. Because if not, it will start making your petals look like they're going sideways instead of like this coming out from the center. So anyway, continue this all the way around, and when you get back up to the end, I'll show you how to end the round and start the next. So I am here already. Uh, when you chain five, the end here, you can go ahead, because if you put it here on the top, the first butterfly stitch, it's not as, uh, you know, it's more flat. I don't like it like that. So there's this very first stitch that you usually get when you first start a row of butterfly stitch, this long stitch at the beginning, that's where I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to slip stitch into to get more of that ridge I'm looking for. I'll chain two and do my butterfly stitches. Okay, I went ahead and did my six butterfly stitches, worked in this last one uh, that I just showed you how to connect because this is a perfect time to show you what I'm talking about now. 
uh, we did six butterfly stitch stitches worked in each chain five space now in this one as you can clearly see it's not good it's not fitting in there well I mean, it, it really sticks out so what you want to do is instead of putting six try to put five still doesn't lay so flat then you want to go ahead and back out maybe four the four is good four, four actually fits flat in there perfectly so you want to back out a couple for you it may not be this way but this is the way I'm showing you if you if it's too crowded and you want this to lay flat you have to get rid of some stitches sometimes and as you can see to make this fit perfectly there's a butterfly stitch here that's where you want to slip stitch in lay your piece down check it see it's got some bulging here so you know definitely for the next round you're going to have to decrease on the amount of stitches that you have so we're going to start off we're going to chain five okay, one, two, three. We're going to starting the next five. row again you want to chain five then you're going to find the butterfly stitch to the left or to the right if you're right handed I mean left handed and slip stitch and chain two once you chain two flip it over to the back and now like I said I'm going to try to put five butterfly stitches worked in on the chain and if I can't find a good flat place to slip stitch then I'm going to have to back out and chain four and do four butterfly stitches and this is what you're going to be doing for the remainder of the spiral find a nice place to slip stitch it in then you're going to chain five one two three four five again turn it over with the back facing you and you're going to find the first wing here this is too close to where I just slip stitched into so I'm going to probably use the second wing here of the butterfly and then chain two flip it over and work your five butterfly stitches remember you're going along the outside of the flower basically is what it looks like two three four and five and lay your piece flat fits right up to the edge on this one slip stitch to that in that butterfly and then again you want to chain five find the next you then you want to flip it over find the wing of the pet on the petal you just did the first wing chain two flip it back over and we'll start working your butterfly stitch again I have a feeling I'm already going to need to do a four one though. It's two, three, four, and five. So far, it's it's uh. See, it's how it's coming up a little bit here, so I'm going to need to do a four one just to kind of pull it over a little bit. Since uh, I'm a bit far away from where I um, should slip stitch, I'm going to go ahead and leave it a five and slip stitch in this first butterfly stitch on the next petal. And then just to make sure I'm pulling it to flatten it a bit more because it's kind of. Uh, you know up a little bit on this side I'm only going to chain four turn it over find the first butterfly probably this one the second wing of the first butterfly 
I'm going to chain two and I'm only going to work four butterfly stitches on this one. One, two, three, and four. Last butterfly stitch again, I'm not going to do my chain. And this is just going to hopefully tighten that up a bit. So I'm going to find my best connection, which I have a butterfly stitch here and a butterfly stitch here. So the nearest connection's here. This first butterfly stitch near me. So that's what I'm going to do there. And I think I'm going to do another four. See, it's all on what you decide. You have your project, you see how it's pulling, you see how it's laying flat. So you're gonna just have to make the judgment call. And it just comes with experience. This is why, it, this is an intermediate project. Um, I recommend uh, sticking with, going to the other tutorial because I take you through, I think slower, because it's the first time that I ever did it. Uh, I take it through slower, explain everything a little better for you. And I also take you through a lot more rows. Wait, this is only four, right? Yes, four. Like this one, there's a bit of a, a space here, but that's okay, because I, I want it to pull over. So I'm just gonna pull it up a little bit to the top. See how there's a space here? Pull it close as I can. Find it where I can put it in the nearest butterfly stitch I can put it in and slip stitch in that one. And now it is starting to pull a little bit and lay flat. So now I think my next one can be a five again because it's kind of pulled down here and I need it to come up so I can start making it over a little easier. So. I think my next one's gonna be a five, and that's what you're gonna to have to, to judge on as you're making your way around and around and around. And as you can see, this look at the flower in the center. That's your first row, and you'll be counting these petals over. So this will be two, three, four, five, when you have a spiral of five. Um, that's all I'm gonna show you on this video with the flower spiral. Like I said, go ahead and use the tips that I taught you in this video, and then go watch the uh, other tutorial that I made of this and I can show you a little bit better, a little farther, uh, how to do the next row and the next row, uh, keeping the tips in mind that I taught you in this video and you should be fine to make your five rows of spirals. Okay, when you, uh, every time you get to the end, like this is the very end of my second row, I try to make it to where when you end it, that it will be equal. If you have to do less or more to stretch it over to be able to make it as even as you can. This one uh, is only my second row so I can go ahead and slip stitch here and then do my next petal onto the next. But since this is for the tutorial, I'm just going to pretend that this is the end of my fifth row and I'm just going to pull all the way over to here to this petal. And do my slip stitch and if you want to make a connection with this one so that it's not flapping you can also do a connection down here at the bottom and then bring it up to the beginning stitch if it looks good and it doesn't look bad okay so once you have your five rows done and completed and like I said you'll count from the center this is a one row and then you can just count out two you'll always be able to find your center and um, after your second row if you need to place a marker here to help you be able to find uh, to count then go ahead but always count on each side of your marker to make sure that you have the amount of rows that you need and after you have five rows completed then we're going to be ready to start the the outside of the jacket which is what, what I'm going to show you now when you slip stitch you probably won't be on the tip of a petal so what you're going to want to do is slip stitch over keep slip stitching until you feel like you're on the tip 
the very top tip of a petal. And once you are, then you want to chain four. Wait, first you want to chain one and do a single crochet into this first stitch. Then chain four. One, two, three, and four. Find the next tip of the next petal and single crochet in it. Then again, chain four, one, two, three, four. Find the next tip of the next petal and single crochet. Me, since I'm using a bigger hook, I'm probably going to need to do chain five in the middle to make it look right, but you should be using your four millimeter hook and the distance between your petals won't be as big. So you'll, you will want to chain four and then single crochet into the next tip. But just for the tutorial and just because I'm using this five millimeter hook, I'm having to chain five. So just continue to chain four and slip stitch in the tip of the next and then you'll be it'll be looking just like that all the way around okay at the end of round two there's no need to chain one after the last butterfly stitch just go into this long stitch at the beginning there's kind of a a uh, looks like a butterfly stitch but this is where you did the chain just go into the top or the top one the closest one to the butterfly stitch just to even out that top just slip stitch like that and now it should be even on the top there. Now for round three we're going to be starting to make our our arm holes. For my daughter I had to chain 40. I don't know what size you're making it for but for this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how I made my daughter's. So for the armhole chain 40. For the purposes of this tutorial I'm going to be chaining much less. We're going to chain about 20 or so. 